Hello, uh, my name is Ray Smith. I'm a Sunday school teacher here at Austin Grove. Uh, in my particular class, we are in a study of the book of Romans. Uh, so far, we are in chapter five of Romans uh, and we are to verse uh, 15 uh, today. We're gonna get through verse uh, 15 uh, through 19 today in our study. I uh, appreciate all of you that have come back uh, again and again to uh, to my class uh, to listen to this study, and I appreciate all of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll read uh, through verse 19, uh, and then we'll come back and hit uh, each of these verses one at a time. Uh, starting with verse 15, again, that's verse 15 of chapter 5 of the book of Romans. It says, But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Amen. Uh, and it's, it, it seemed to me when I was doing this study uh, this week uh, that Paul uses most of these verses. I mean, he just keeps saying the same thing. He just keeps hitting it again and again. Uh, and uh, the uh, the first part of this verse, uh, verses uh, 15 through 17, are in uh, parenthesis. Uh, so he is kind of, you know, just explaining a little bit better. And then he moves back to his message in verse 18 and 19. Uh, so again, we'll hit verse 15, and this, uh, we're still in parenthesis uh, from verse, uh, I believe it was 13, starting in parenthesis uh, last week. Yes, it was verse 13, uh, starting in parenthesis with the, uh, until the law, and then uh, we end the parenthesis in verse uh, 17 uh, and 18 uh, goes back to his message. So we'll start with verse uh, 15. It says, uh, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. This is going to be the first contrast that Paul's going to make uh, here between the offense of Adam uh, and the free gift of Christ, okay? Uh, by the, the trespass of the first man, uh, Adam, by his, his first act, uh, his first uh, sin, uh, his willful disobedience of uh, God's law, many died. Many die. Uh, the many, of course, refers to uh, all of Adam's descendants. Okay, uh, and death here uh, could be uh, seen as not only uh, physical death uh, but spiritual death as well. Uh, the free gift abounds much more to the many. Christ, one act of redemption, uh, was immeasurably greater than Adam's one act of condemnation. Uh, and while Adam's, while Adam's one sin condemned us all, uh, made us all sinners, uh, Christ's one act saved us from all our sins. So you'll have people that are gonna tell you, they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna say, well, hey, that's not fair. One sin and now all of us are sinners forever. Uh, for me, it, it's not about Adam's sin. For me, it's about Christ's uh, sacrifice. One sacrifice saves us from all our sins. Wow. See, that's what's amazing to me. Uh, because the one act of Christ uh, was sufficient for all sins. Not just Adam's sin. Not just Adam's first sin of disobedience. All sins. Uh all of Adam's later sins, all of his descendant sins, all of my sins uh, that I've committed uh, up until this point, uh, all of the sins that I will commit 
Uh, and we're not just, I mean, to, to see the scope of this, the scope of his one act and how all encompassing it is because it's not just, these are not just sins of deed, okay, that we're talking about here. These are, these are sins of thought too. I mean, all of this is covered. Uh, sins of thought. And I mean, I, that's, that's what I struggle with the most. I mean, it happens so quick, man. I mean, you have a negative thought about somebody. It's why, I mean, what, how do you stop that? Uh, it seems almost impossible, but the, the sacrifice that Christ made covered all of that, covered all of that. That's what's amazing to me. Not that one sin condemned us all is that one righteous act, one, I mean, Christ, Christ does this once. His act of obedience. One act of obedience saved us all from all our sins. Uh, and while, uh, I mean, it's, it's a free gift, man. Uh, and this free gift is a wonderful manifestation of the grace of God abounding to sinners, to a race of sinners. Uh, and this, this gift uh, this grace is made possible by the grace of one man, uh, Jesus Christ. And it's, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't help but think of uh, the song, you know, it truly is amazing grace. Uh, when you think about what he did for us, I mean, it really is amazing grace. I mean, this, the hymn writer had it, had it on point. I mean, that that is amazing grace uh, on his part to die for He's not, and he didn't come to die for good people. That's what, uh, that's what a lot of the, the lost will, will have you believe. They're like, well, he came to save all the good people. No, no, that's not what he did. Uh, he came to save sinners. Uh, he died for people that were in active rebellion against him. You and me, we're in active rebellion against God. There's no neutrality there. Either you're with him or you're against him. And that's who he came to die for. Uh, through his sacrificial death, uh, the gift of eternal life is offered to many. Uh, and you have to understand that there are two many's in this verse, okay? Uh, and they don't refer to the same people. Uh, the first many includes all who uh, became subject to death as a result of Adam's trespass. Uh, the second meaning refers to all who become uh, members of the new creation, uh, of which Christ is the federal head. And you'll remember last week we talked about federal heads or representatives, uh, and Christ is a federal head or a representative of the believers, the new creation, while Adam is the federal head or representative of the old world. Uh, and I mean it. The the ones that that Christ is the federal head of the new creation. Uh, this includes only those to whom God's grace has abounded. Uh, that is true believers. Uh, now, while God's mercy is poured out on all, uh, His grace is appropriate. Okay, I mean, people will say, you know, the mercy of God, and they'll they'll want to they want to tell you about all the, the terrible terrible things that are happening uh, in the world, uh, and you know well, that's God's mercy, that's God's grace. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, you, I mean, you can take that. You go back as far as you like. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Go back to the start. Uh, go back to Adam. There was one law, one one law with one punishment. What was the punishment for that law? He said, don't eat of the fruit of the tree, for in the day you do, you shall surely die. It's a death penalty. One law, one penalty. Adam ate from the, the tree. How long did he live? Almost a thousand years. Almost a thousand years. That's mercy. That's mercy. The penalty and his punishment was death. It was death. And in God's patience and long suffering, Adam still Adam lived almost a thousand years. 
before that, that sentence was carried out. It wasn't immediate. Uh, God, that is God's mercy. That is God's long suffering. Uh, I mean, I thank God that, that he's allowed me long enough. Uh, I mean, because I spent, I spent uh, quite a bit of time out of church uh, away from God. I praise, I praise God that, that he allowed me time to come back uh, to study his word. Uh, I mean, that, that he's long suffering, he's patient, uh, and he's merciful. We move on to uh, verse 16. It says, And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Paul gives us a very uh, another very important contrast between Adam's sin and the gift of Christ. Uh, the one offense of Adam uh, brought inevitable judgment. Okay? Uh, and the verdict of that judgment was condemned. Uh, the free gift of Christ, on the other hand, uh, dealt effectively with many offenses, uh, not just one. And it resulted in a verdict of acquitted or not guilty. Uh, and anybody, anybody familiar with our justice system now uh, understands that acquitted or not guilty is not the same as innocent. Okay? Not, not being found guilty is not the same as being proved innocent. We are not innocent. Okay? But he finds us not guilty. Uh, and I can't help but think of that without thinking of Job. Uh, you know, what did God say about Job? Uh, did he say, you know, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, he's perfect? No, he didn't. He's sinless? No, he didn't. He said, have you, have you considered my, my servant Job uh, a man blameless and upright? He was blameless. He did the best he could with the knowledge that he had. Uh, his sins were sins of ignorance uh, or passion. He did the best he could, uh, but he was never sinless. Uh, the free gift of Christ, on the other hand, uh, or Christ's gift, uh, Paul does a masterful job highlighting uh, the differences between Adam's sin and Christ's gift, uh, between the terrible, the terrible habit uh, wrought by one sin and uh, the amazing deliverance wrought by many sins. Uh, and finally, between the verdict of condemnation and the verdict of justification. Uh, and you've got to think, you know, I mean, people sometimes forget that, you know, I mean, Adam may have had it, uh, as bad as you could get. I mean, he may have had this worse than anybody else. Adam remembered the garden. Adam would have remembered what it was like to live in the garden with God. He would have remembered what it was like not to have to work and toil in the ground. Uh, not to have to work at all. He would have remembered that. He would have remembered the perfection of, that God had for him in the garden. And he lived almost a thousand years. He had almost, for me, that's almost a thousand years to regret his one, his one bad decision. His first act of disobedience. I'm sure he sinned after that. I'm, I'm not saying he only sinned once. I'm sure he sinned after that, but the one that he regretted the most, I'm sure was that first one that opened the door for all the rest. Uh, Adam brought upon uh, all men condemnation for only one offense one offense uh, a willful act of disobedience a willful act of disobedience uh, now I know that Eve offered it to him uh, but he knew he knew God said no uh, and he could have told Eve no he should have led and he didn't he followed uh, I imagine that, that, you know, it went something like, you know, hey, it's right. This is knowledge of good and evil. Here, have, it, have some of this. Uh, instead of turning her down, he ate it. Uh, temptation got the best of him. Uh, that one willful act of disobedience uh, 
condemn us all. Christ, however, delivers believers from condemnation for all their offenses. So one act brought punishment to all of us. Uh, and Christ's act brought salvation for all sin. For all sin. Now whose was the greater act? I can't, I can't even comprehend all sin, man. I have enough trouble trying to keep up with my own sin. Not, not to mention all sin. Wow. It's, 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 that's too much to, that's too much to think about. It just boggles the mind. Uh, you move on to verse 17. It says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. And Paul, he, he keeps hammering this home. By one man's offense, okay, death reigned uh, as a tyrant. Uh, I mean, people will tell you there's only two certainties in life, death and taxes. Uh, and, you know, they, they say that in jest, but jest, but death is a certainty. Uh, but by the gracious gift of righteousness, a gift that simply overflows with grace. Uh, I mean, it just oozes grace. Uh, all believers reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Now, talk about grace. Talk about grace. Uh, we're not only delivered. He not only saved us. He not only saved us. Uh, if that wasn't enough, he saves us from our sin. Uh, if that wasn't enough, uh, to be saved from death, to be saved from our sin. But this, this tells us we're going to reign with him. We are kings. Wow. Uh, it's, I mean, you're standing in front of the king, the king of kings. You know, he says, look, he says, you're not only pardoned. He says, it's not, it's not, you're fine. You're not guilty. Now go home. He says, you're not guilty. Come up here and sit with me. You're not guilty. You're with me now. Where I go, you go. Uh, what I do, you do. You're with me. Come up here and sit beside me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, it's hard for me to, to, to comprehend that. I mean, can we really understand what that means? Uh, I mean, I mean, do we? Uh, can we understand what that means? Uh, to reign with Christ, uh, an infinite being, uh, I mean, it just kind of boggles the mind. I mean, I can't, uh, I mean, I can't even comprehend the fact that, that God, the father sees me the same way he sees his son. I mean, that just, it doesn't compute for me. I can't, I can't, I can't understand that. I can't fathom that. Uh, much less what it's going to be like to reign with him. That, I mean, that just blows my mind. Uh, to be royalty as he is royalty. Uh, and this sparks a question that you have to ask yourself, and it's an unpleasant one. Uh, the question we have to ask ourselves is, do we live like the royalty that Paul says that we are? Or do we live the same as unbelievers around us? Uh, it's a question that we have to ask ourselves. You got to be completely honest uh, to have it do any help, to have it help. In uh, verse 18, it says, therefore, we're out of parenthesis now. It says, therefore, as though through one man's offense, judgment came to all men resulting in condemnation, even so through the one Man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Uh, again, Adam, he's pounding this point home. Adam's sin brought condemnation to all men, but the righteous act of Jesus brought justification of life to all. The righteous act of Christ, uh, it's important to know this, the righteous act of Christ was not his, his perfect life, okay? Uh, it wasn't the fact that he kept the law perfectly, Okay. The righteous act we're talking about is the substitutionary death on the cross. Uh, this is what brought justification of life. Or uh, to explain that, it's justification that results in life uh, and brought it to all men. Now, it's important to point out 
that there are two alls here. Uh, the same way there were two minis earlier. There's two all in here in this verse, and they don't reserve, refer to the same people. Uh, the first all means all who are in Adam. Uh, the second verse means all who are in Christ. Uh, and this is clear from the preceding verse uh, that says those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Okay? Uh, the gift has to be received by faith. Uh only those who trust in the Lord by uh, receive justification for life. Now, he certainly brought the opportunity for justification to all men, everybody, every single one. Uh, but he's not going to force it on them. Okay? God didn't make a bunch of robots. Okay? You do have free will. Uh, and you can turn your nose up at him if you like. Uh, I personally don't advise that, but you can. Uh, you can snub, snub Christ and the gift he offers. Uh, he's not, he's not going to make you do this. Uh, I'm fully convinced that he could if he wanted to. Uh, but that's not how he wants you. He's not going to make you love him. You have to choose that. Uh, it, the gift of Christ has to be received as just that. It's a gift. Uh, and if you, turn, if you choose to turn away uh, the gift he's offering, uh, he will let you. He will let you. He will not force, force it upon you. You can choose your own way. Uh, just know that if you do choose your own way, you are choosing an eternity without, without him. And that's an eternity in hell. Uh, in verse 19, it says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Uh, just as Adam's disobedience to the command of God, uh, many were made sinners. Uh, so also by the obedience, Christ's obedience to the Father, any who trust in him are declared righteous. Uh, his obedience led them to the cross or led him to the cross as our sin bearer. Now, you have to be very careful here because universalists are going to use these verses uh, to try to prove that all men will eventually be saved. Uh, and now, I, that's a beautiful thought. It's not true, though. Uh, my Bible doesn't say that. Uh, there's uh, several uh, several religions that, that uh, espouse that, saying that, that eventually all people will be saved. Eventually all people will be in heaven. Uh, I believe the Roman Catholics, uh, they use purgatory to say that there's a certain time you're going to spend here. Eventually you'll get out. Uh, so eventually nobody will be in hell. Uh, and that's simply not true. Uh, that's simply not true. Uh, and basically you, you want to do that. I mean, this passage here deals uh, obviously with two federal headships uh, and it has the whole time. Adam is one headship and Christ is the other. And it's clear that just as Adam's sin affects those who are in him, who are in him so Christ's righteous act benefits only those who are in him. Now, even if this passage wasn't clear and you couldn't take that from that, what you need to do is you compare this passage to other passages in the Bible, okay? Uh, you compare scripture to scripture. Does this agree with what the rest of the Bible says? Uh, does this verse agree with what the rest of the Bible says? Uh, and I can't make this verse say that everybody ends up in heaven because that's not what the rest of my Bible says. Okay. Uh, and the first verse that I thought of that directly countered that uh, was in Matthew 7, uh, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Christ says, narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Uh, and he even goes further in that verse. Uh, look this up and, and read this. Uh, it's uh, Matthew 7, uh, 13 and 14. Uh, and we've got time, so we'll go ahead and we can read that now. Uh, and Matthew, let me find it real quick. Uh, in chapter 7. Uh, Verses 13 and 14, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that lead, which leads to life, and there are few 
who find it. Okay, that tells me that that I mean it's not. He didn't say it was a four lane highway going into to life. Okay, narrows the way. Worse than that, few find it. It's not just narrow; few even find it. So the the idea that everybody is eventually going to be saved is just I mean I can't make my Bible agree with that. I'm a, uh, as much as I wish I could, I would uh, the thought of everybody ending up in heaven one day. Uh, you know, it's great, but it's just not, it's not biblical. It's not in here. Uh, but uh, we will end there today. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pick up next week in verse uh, 20. Uh, and we'll carry verse 20 on into uh, chapter six uh, next week uh, and uh, continue. Or again, we're having services here at Austin Grove. Again, we are having Sunday school class uh, here. You can come for Sunday school. If you're not comfortable uh, being in the sanctuary with everybody, you can come for Sunday school alone at that if that is what would make you happy. Uh, we are wearing a mask in the classroom. Uh, we are social distancing uh, in the classroom. Uh, I'm wearing a mask the entire time I teach. So uh, we're requesting everybody in the class to wear a mask as well. Uh, so if you do come, please be prepared to do that for us uh, and for everybody else that's going to be here. Uh, I know it's a sacrifice. I can't stand wearing a mask myself, but uh, we will do that uh, to make make everybody else safe uh and it's not just a sacrifice of me wearing a mask i've had my wife has been angry at me for a couple of months now about the whole mask thing <laughs> so uh nobody can be angry at me about the mask that my wife is uh so we are going to do that to try to keep everybody as safe as possible uh, and we do want you to be here we do want to have fellowship with you so uh again those times are uh, 9 45 for sunday school uh, and 1045 for preaching. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, in your house uh, and, and worship you, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to, to fellowship with fellow believers again, Lord, and to, to discuss your word, Father. I mean, it's uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's thrilling to to discuss things that were written over 2,000 years ago that are still, uh, still relevant, uh, just as relevant today as they were when they were written, Father, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you astound me, Lord. You're an amazing God. We praise you for that. We ask that you be with us throughout the coming week. Keep us safe, Father. Uh, be with our nation uh, as a whole right now during these trying times, Lord. Uh, and let your will be done, Lord. I mean, that's, that's all I know to pray for. Let your will be done, Father. We ask that you be with us throughout the coming week, uh, Lead us to people that need to hear your gospel message, Father, and put your hand upon us as we try to speak that uh, in your name, Lord. Uh, please give the people that you send to us a willing heart to receive your word, Father. All these things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.